Well, from a star of today to someone who brought the world's greatest performers to Yorkshire in the 1960s, my next guest had the unenviable task of persuading some of the best-known names in showbiz to a small town in West Yorkshire that they'd never heard of. The town was Batley, the venue was the Batley Variety Club, and the man who had the golden touch was James Corrigan. So let's take a look back to Graham Thompson's report about the man who founded a club to showcase the stars. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The wonderful world of the Batley Variety Club, where stars like Louis Armstrong created in West Yorkshire a show business legend. Batley was the top dog. There was the atmosphere, there were the artists, and there were the crowds. You look back in life and say, well, we did it, and we saw it, and we enjoyed it. In fact, 1,700 people a night were enjoying it during its heyday, attracted by stars like Morecambe and Wise. A musical demon set your honey a dream, and won't you play me some rag? Don't you know the other one, then? Laughing all the way to the bank oh, and a millionaire man. lifestyle was the club's but founder, the fairground member, worker's son, Jimmy uh, Corrigan. The members that we've got, we've got 60, 65,000 members. And all the members, if we have Shirley Bassey, which is on New Year's Eve for a week, we couldn't get all our members in that particular week. What we've got to do now is to get these stars, not for one week, but for three weeks or even a month. Well, Jimmy Corrigan, as we saw there, the founder of Batley Variety Club, is here now, along with Maureen Prest, who handled public relations and promotions for the club during its heyday. Welcome to the programme, both of you. you. Quite a long time since that filmed, wasn't it? Wasn't it? <laughs> now, I suppose for you, it wasn't just a magic moment, it was a magic era, wasn't it? Yes, it was, because it's, uh, we, we brought something into this area, or into Batley, or into this Leeds area, that had never been seen before, you know, these artists at the prices that people could afford. It really was a phenomenon, Maureen, isn't it? It was meteoric. It, it was. really was meteoric, Why? what James it... did for mm -hmm. the area. Because in those days, you've got to remember, life has changed now. But in the 1960s, people used to go to work in little, well, in mills. And it was the heart of the heavy woolen district. There was no glamour. People were getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning to go and work in a mill. And James had his idea. Great vision great pioneer and brought it to the homes, well, to, to ordinary people who could go and enjoy a wonderful night out, rubbing shoulders with the stars, the greatest stars in the world really, at prices they could afford to, to pay. James, why was it so important to you that you had a club that was different from all the others, that you got these big names to battling? Well, it was very important. I mean, uh, people wanted to, uh, people approached me, wanted to run it as a casino as well, because in those days you didn't need to get the licenses like you do now. And I didn't want gambling at all. I wanted to even have fruit machines in the, in the club. I wanted it strictly for entertainment. Mm -hmm. So people could go and enjoy themselves. And how, how difficult was it, though, to persuade these big stars? And we saw there Louis Armstrong, Morecambe and Wise, you had people like Shirley Bassey, didn't you, came over and, right. and played for several weeks. In, in a small town like Batley that they'd probably never heard of before. How, how did you manage to do it? Well, it built up over the years. Well, not, not over the months, really. A weeks to start with. Certain people came. And we were paying them good money as far as the... And there weren't that many places for them to play other than theatres. So uh, the club started. Mm -hmm. And uh, one person recommended it to another. And so, oh, so and so worked there. You know, it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. And that was the idea. What kind of money were you paying them? Uh, to start off with, I think... Uh, around about three to four thousand pounds a week which was a lot of it money was, in those especially days. for that period yeah. but remember we were only charging five shillings to go in which is 25 pence as money as it is now and beer was one one and four three and sixpence three and sixpence a pint i don't drink i don't drink but the food as well the baskets uh champion chips fish and chips so it was a good night out, really, it was a good wasn't night, it? For yeah. four or five pounds, that's mm. as much as I spent. That's fun. Who did you pay the most to? Uh, my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I can imagine that, actually. Now, Maureen, well, can you tell us what, what uh, sort of people you actually got and what they thought of Batley when they arrived? I mean, were they a bit surprised? Uh, absolutely amazed, but they were very, very... The, the top artists, the very top artists, were always the nicest people, you know. Very ordinary people, really, at the, at the bottom of it all, weren't it? Who was, the, who was your favourite of all the people I that think visited? of all... Well, Eric Morecambe presented the most problems that week because he, unfortunately, had a, a very bad heart attack while he was working at Bathby, that mm -hmm. clip that you yeah. showed. So we, from my point of view, that was a tough, tough time for me because we had to turn everything around and mm -hmm. rearrange a show at a minute's notice because mm -hmm. it was sad and Eric had suffered a very serious heart attack and we were all worried for him and it was a nightmare. That, a good it was memory a, then, it, no. that was a bad memory. Mm -hmm. But the good memory, the nicest memory I think I have is Louis Armstrong being such a humble, uh, person, he was just, he was this big legend, as far as we were concerned, this huge legend was arriving, this jazz musician, and he was so humble, and he was so pleased to be in Batley, because he regarded them as his people, because he was from very humble beginnings, mm -hmm. he had no formal education, mm -hmm. and the man was illiterate, and we used to have to stand in the dressing room after the shows, and tell him how to spell the names of the fans mm -hmm. who were after mm -hmm. his autograph. It was absolutely wonderful, wonderful oh. days. Yeah. And obviously for you, good memories, James. You, oh, yeah. yes, wonderful yeah. memories. Yes, yes lovely wonderful. to look back on. Yes, I'm, I'm very pleased that I, I did it at that time. It couldn't possibly never happen again, but we did. We, did, we brought something into this area. You did it indeed. James Corrigan, thank you very much for coming thank along. You, yeah. Thank you as well, Maureen. Thank you.